Hey, what's up guys? Franco here. You're watching Pocketable Tech. And today we're going to be reviewing LG's new flagship device, the G2. In this review, we will be covering all of the important factors such as hardware, software, optics, and features. Immediately after watching this review, you will have all the necessary information in making an informed decision on whether or not the G2 is worth your hard-earned cash. So without any hesitation, let's move forward and go ahead and review the LG G2. Right at first glance, you can see that the G2 is unlike any other handset on the market at the moment. Starting with the side bezels, which are at an unbelievable one-tenth of an inch, taking the crown of the having the thinnest bezel of any other smartphone at the moment. This of course makes for a much more modern design and a much better viewing experience. In addition to the super slim bezel design, a 5.2 inch HD IPS display providing 423 pixels per inch attracts the hands and eyes of those in viewable distance. What I'm trying to say is that the screen is absolutely beautiful. And it just goes to show why companies like Google and Apple choose LG to create their displays. As far as the specifics go, it's running the newly polished Snapdragon 800 with a 2.26 GHz quad-core crate CPU and Adreno 330 GPU. It has 32 gigabytes of internal storage, 24 gigs of which is available to the user, and there is no expandable storage. A 3000 mAh battery lays embedded in the G2's super slim 8.9 mm body. Given the G2's high resolution of 1080p, surprisingly the battery performs excellent. You can expect to get approximately 12 and a half hours with heavy use. And when I say heavy use, I'm talking about an hour of streaming on YouTube, hour and a half of Netflix, and about an hour and a half of music playback. All that along with daily checking of mail, social media sites, messaging, and taking pictures and video, with the screen brightness set to 70%. To say the least, I was very impressed with the battery performance, and with moderate use you can easily make it through a day and then some. This extended battery life is in part due to Qualcomm's new 800 chipset, which does a great job with power management. Also, I had some questions asked to me concerning overheating, and I can tell you that during my time with the G2, I noticed absolutely no overheating or significant heat of any sort coming from the device, which again is probably due to Qualcomm's refined 800 CPU. One of the other things I really applaud LG for is innovating what we've become accustomed to. In my opinion, physical innovation is what really moves tech forward. Just like we saw what HTC did with the HTC One by innovating and redesigning the speaker placement, LG went ahead and took their own approach to redesigning the smartphone as we know it and created a phone with a buttonless design. There is only one physical button on the phone and it's located uniquely on the back of the device right underneath the camera lens. Now, it did take some time getting used to not having the volume rocker and power switch on the sides of the phone, but after a few hours it became second nature to use the back button, since my index finger was already naturally there. Also, with the feature that LG has implemented called knock-on, which allows you to tap the display to wake up the device, it therefore makes interacting between the device more intuitive, and I actually have come to find it quicker than finding and pressing an actual physical power button on the sides of the phone. Like I said just a minute ago, it does take some time getting used to, but once you do, it feels very natural, and you'll find yourself accessing your cell phone a lot quicker. On the top right of the display, we have an LED notification light, and I can't tell you how much I missed having this on my phones. Red, blue, and green are the colors that are displayed and pulsate when you either miss the message or a call, when the device is charging, and when the device is powering on. Moving along to the software side of things, the G2 is running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, and is very close to the stock Android experience with very little bloatware and no overwhelming skins of any sort. Before unlocking the phone, you have a few quick options displayed which allow you to quickly launch apps from pressing the app and sliding to unlock as you normally would. Also, you have options to add widgets to the lock screen if you choose to for quick viewing. 
For the shutter bugs out there, like myself, who are interested in dedicated camera buttons and quick methods for launching the camera, we have three options on the G2. First, which is the quickest and most efficient method is by long pressing the back button downward. This will launch the camera in approximately 3 seconds. The other way to launch the camera is from the lock screen. By simply sliding to the left, it will launch you straight into the camera app. And the last method for launching the camera is by reorganizing your main app tray and manually placing the camera app icon itself front and center. By pulling down the notification shade, you'll see a very stock Android experience with some added LG customizations. You have quick access to QSlide. And now what QSlide does is it gives you another method for multitasking. Upon pressing QSlide, you will see a number of apps revealed, which can be opened in the form of small windows, which you can then further resize and make transparent. These windows will stay open in the background while you navigate around the phone, and you can have open two windows at a time. Another method of multitasking LG has introduced is called Slide Aside. And pretty much what this does is it allows you to save up to three apps by pressing on the screen with three fingers and sliding to the left. And then the reverse action will bring them back, whereupon you can just slide up to close or X out of it. I can't say I used this option much, as it felt to be sort of redundant, especially when I can easily access my multitask panel by using just one finger. Back in the notification shade, you'll have access to Quick Remote, which uses the IR blaster on the front of the device and allows you to control a number of electronics and it actually works very nice. And having it in the notification tray really makes it convenient to get to quickly. Quick Memo is also something very useful to have when you need to quickly jot something down. You can access Quick Memo from the notification tray or by long pressing the back button upward. Also in the notification shade, you'll have quick options to adjust screen brightness and call volume, which is very nice. A few other pre-installed apps you'll find on the G2 are a dictionary, voice recorder, and an FM radio, all which are very useful and add to the user experience. A few other features which I mentioned in another video are plug and pop which is a feature that recognizes when you have plugged a 3.5 millimeter headphone set into your into the jack whereupon it then gives you a list of options of applications you may want to initiate again this is just adding more towards the G2's hands-free approach Capture Plus is another one and pretty much what this is is an updated way of taking a screenshot and very intuitive might I say. So what this does is it allows you to take a screenshot of a whole web page and then later on go back and adjust and crop it to your liking. There's also a guest mode which I really didn't use but it is there for those that need it and it works by using the pattern unlock. You make two different pattern unlocks and one would be for guest mode. So when you unlock your phone with that pattern, it'll go to a different UI where you have certain applications and certain things that you want those people to see. Whereas all your other pictures and other apps that you have downloaded could be saved and hidden from view. So if someone wants to borrow your phone, you can easily just put in the guest mode pattern unlock and it'll go right to guest mode pretty cool feature. And lastly, there's also a feature called Answer Me, which I've been using the whole time I've had the phone. And pretty much what this does is whenever you get a phone call, instead of having to press OK or the phone button to slide up to answer the call, simply all you have to do is raise the phone to your ear and the sensors on the phone will, t will know that the phone is by your ear and automatically pick up the call for you. Now on to the optics. And for those that follow me on Instagram and Facebook, know how much optics on a smartphone matter to me. In the optics department, the G2 is sporting a 2.1 megapixel front facer and a 13 megapixel lens on the rear, which is covered by sapphire crystal glass, which is supposed to help and prevent fingerprints and scratches. Aside from the 13 megapixel lens, optical image stabilization has been built into the camera hardware. The OIS performs nicely and does the job in preventing blur-free images most of the time. In perfectly lit settings, the G2 can really take some awesome pictures with true-to-life color reproduction and has a very fast capture speed. The photos taken on the G2 are much truer to life than most other smartphone cameras I've tested, including the Galaxy Note, GS4, and Nokia Lumia 920. However, when the setting becomes a bit darker, the G2 struggles with sharpness and has a hard time brightening the picture. 
Fortunately, the G2's full feature camera application, you're able to do a lot of tweaking and ultimately can get the picture to look just how you want it to look. The G2 has the ability of recording 1080p footage and once again the video recorded on the G2 is very nice, especially when you take advantage of its higher frame rate options. At 60 frames per second, video on the G2 looks absolutely amazing and provide a clearer image of moving objects with better color reproduction than filmed at 30 frames per second. I've compared the video quality to that of the Nokia Lumia 920, which is also a legend in the optics department, only to conclude that the G2's video has an insanely quicker white balance transition and also produces truer to life color reproduction whereas the Lumia 920 can sometimes oversaturate both its images and video. The photos on the G2 compared to the Lumia 920 again are more true to life with truer color reproductions. As far as low light photography is concerned, photos are decent. Using the G2's camera options such as night mode and messing around with the brightness levels will help but do very little in rivaling the legendary Nokia Lumia 920's low light performance. Something that also really impressed me on the G2 is the way it picks up sound. It does a great job at recording sound and what's even cooler is that you're given the ability to select which microphones on the device are more dominant. For instance, after you're done recording a video, you can go back and adjust whether you want the audio to be centered or whether you want the right or left sounds to be more dominant. While live recording, you have the ability to actually zoom into your point of interest and pick up the audio in just that area. LG is calling this feature audio zoom and it surprisingly works quite well. Okay, so in conclusion, my final thoughts are the G2 feels good in the hand. Despite its plastic hyperglaze finish, it still feels very sturdy and far from cheap. Also, despite it being a 5.2 inch device, the lightweight and curvature makes it very easy to hold and pocketable. Would I suggest you to spend your hard earned cash on this phone? I definitely would. But then again, it also depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for an Android phone with an innovative design and an amazing 1080p display, then go for it. The G2, without any hesitation, has one of the best displays money can buy. If you're looking for the best low-light photography on a smartphone, then you might have to consider switching platforms, since the higher-end Lumia devices running Windows Phone have been shown to excel greatly in this department. If you're an Android user with no intention of switching platforms, then the G2 is still a very good choice and in my experience outdoes its top competitor, the Samsung Galaxy S4 on every note, from its display to the fact that it has optical image stabilization and a full featured camera application. Is speaker quality on a phone really important to you? If so, the G2 is going to disappoint somewhat. Although LG is boasting a hi-fi audio playback featuring a 24-bit 192kHz hi-fi sound, although they do sound great when using headphones, the physical speakers on the device do not provide a well-balanced sound at all. Even though they're loud, they produce absolutely no low-end or mid-range frequency, making music sound very shallow and tinny. Still, watching and listening to Netflix and YouTube videos is just fine. It's just when listening to music, this lack of low-end and mid-range sound really affects the musical experience. So for that, I would say make sure you plug in a pair of headphones or hook it up to a wireless speaker if you plan to listen to music. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to see more content like this, definitely do click that subscribe button below where you can keep up to date with mobile technology in an ever-evolving world. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below as well. Once again, you've been watching Pocketable Tech, and I'm Franco, and I will see you guys in the next video.